The time is finally here. Welcome to the multiplayer reveal for Call of Duty Vanguard. I'm Greg Reisdorf, the multiplayer creative director at Sledgehammer Games. At reveal, we saw the rise of Special Forces team, and now we've had our first technical test of Vanguard out in the wild, the Champion Hill Alpha. Our team is hyper-focused on key data points coming out of that test, and thank you for all the valuable feedback. Today, we will show you our vision of the multiplayer experience for Call of Duty Vanguard. On our last project, we brought the brotherhood of World War II soldiers to life in a more traditional approach, which was a great experience. For Vanguard, we're taking liberties and risks to deliver something completely fresh, new, and fun. But first, let's watch the world premiere of Call of Duty Vanguard multiplayer. Warriors, saboteurs, assassins, their lives turned upside down by the Reich. Each one with an axe to grind, and when we turn them loose, you better believe they're coming out swinging. now and get early access to the open beta. Digital pre-orders get instant access to the Night Raid Mastercraft and Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. Such amazing work that the team's been able to do, and we're thrilled to have that trailer out in the wild. Our multiplayer team is putting players in the shoes of a globally diverse cast. We focused on special forces operators that are untraditional, gritty anti-heroes from every front of the war. We've also focused on our down-the-barrel experience to bring you brute force weaponry that devastates your enemies and world around you. Today, I have the pleasure of sitting down with some of my colleagues I haven't seen in over a year and some folks that I've never met before in real life. Our conversations today will be broken down into four different sections. We're gonna talk about our day one offering for multiplayer. We're gonna go in-depth in the gameplay. We're gonna talk to our art directors about Vanguard's unique look and take on World War II. We're gonna to talk to our narrative team about how they brought our operators to life. And we have some special guests from Beanox and Raven. Plus, following the stream, we've invited some of your favorite creators to play Call of Duty Vanguard multiplayer. So stick around, we're just getting started. Well, let's talk about some multiplayer. Sounds good. So we have 20 total maps in the game. We do. 16 of them that are working with core, and they're across 
all locations in the, their <laughs> Western Front, Eastern Front, North Africa, yep. as well as the Pacific. And then the four maps that comprise Champion Hill, which is airstrip, market, courtyard, and train yard. I do love how we have found this fresh approach to World War II. We really, really wanted this time to focus on a global warfare and variety of settings. And when you think about the player experience too, let's say you finish a match on Gavutu and you just came from the Pacific Theater, and then the next map that loads up is Desert Siege, and now you're in North Africa. So you're just hopping all over the globe. So we just finished up Alpha. That was the first technical test of Vanguard. And starting today, you can preload for the beta which has Champion Hill that everybody can now experience, as well as four new maps. Yeah, that, that's what I'm super excited about. It's Core MP for the first time, so it's Red Star, Hotel Royale, Gavutu, and Eagle's Nest. I cannot wait to see all of those players in there. And then we also have combat pacing. So you can now experience this huge range from tactical combat all the way up to blitz combat across those modes that are in the beta. It's such a different experience between when you're playing with Blitz and Tactical as well, yeah. because when you're playing Blitz, it's just no holds barred, you're going. Tactical is a lower player count, so we're actually increasing the time to engagement in there, and every shot matters. You're able to play with it in the filter system, so within quick match play, you're able to be like, oh, I prefer tactical. I'm gonna be doing Blitz. I remember when we were just first talking about it, the idea of making every map into shipment. I love that. <laughs> but having a, a map the size of Red Star feel like shipment, if you're having that, that level well. of combat yeah. pacing is, is what's really fun because it's, it's different map by map. It's so much fun to just go in and you're not even worried when you're getting killed because mm -hmm. you just get killed and respawn and kill someone else constantly. It's, it's, it's amazing. We also have patrol coming in as well. It's a new mode for Vanguard. It's really fun. I'm really excited to see how fans respond. I, just, I cannot wait, I cannot wait. It's essentially the moving hard point that's moving around the map on this track. You're going and you're taking it, and as people play it more and more and discover new strategies around it, like there's play the patrol point, hold it down for your team, but that patrol point is moving no matter how many people from your team are on it. So yeah. if you're truly you know, playing as a team, you're gonna have people behind the patrol point, in front of it, really locking down those lanes. That mode is bringing so much more than we've ever had, and you're also exploring the entire map. Playing with other players in these maps, being able to go into, you know, clans. They're coming into the game, they're a tier one feature. You can pair up with your buddies and your friends. We really want to lean into social play because it does make all of your experiences on those maps and modes just so much better. Think about what you just said about patrol too. Like if you played patrol with your clan, how You're much more effective be you would so be if oh, yeah, everybody absolutely. was coordinated, taking the patrol point at the same time. Yeah, and you actually progress with your clan. Like that's a new thing that we have in the game. It's pretty exciting and awesome. Like, being able to, to have the three of us in a clan and go and, and be on progression. And you can be in a clan together cross-gen as well. That's right. So we have a huge commitment to our players around cross-gen, cross-platform play, where you can go and team up with really anybody who has the game. It's exciting for me because now I can finally play with my cousin in Toronto who's a PC player and I'm going to play on my PS4 at home. I really loved it as well because we've invested quite a lot in our social features. It really widens the scope of the social experience. If you have a friend who's playing Call of Duty, you don't have to now ask them, oh, what are you playing on? Right. You can just be like, join my clan. We're so excited to have Call of Duty Vanguard launch. The team has done a phenomenal job. I can't thank them enough for all of the effort they've put in. The most content day one it's gonna be great. Let's go! We're here to talk about gameplay. So this is reactive environments, movement and footsteps, create a class, weapons. It's all about creating a fun environment for the players to run around in. And when we were thinking about it as a team, that, that feeling of pulling the trigger has to be awesome. And you need to be able to use it then for gameplay as well. It's all about that player creativity. When you first shoot something and it reacts to it, mm -hmm. now you start becoming a little more creative about what you want to do with that. Tactical sprint is in the game. We have it coming back, and you can just sprint through those walls as well. 
We try to give multiple options for how you want to do things, which really allows for a lot of freedom. That's right. When you're taking cover behind something, they can also flush you out. You start seeing this stuff just start getting shredded. You can mount on top of these surfaces as well. I love sliding into cover and either mounting on the side, mounting on the top, blind firing over the top. Oh. So blind fire, like let's just talk about yeah. that for a second because blind fire is an all new addition to Vanguard. It's kind of the hip fire of mount. We actually have it set up where you can ADS and go into mount. So when you're near something, you're gonna go into mount every time you do that. But if you're in cover behind it, your gun's gonna come up and now you're actually in this state where you you know you can blind fire over it. You get a little peek over the piece of cover that you're on, and you're now able to move back and forth across that, fire, you get the hip fire spread, and then once you see somebody coming, you can actually go right back into mount and transition between the two, and it's, it's so fluid. It just feels like it was always supposed to be there. Destructible environments are throughout the game. It's on every map, and it just changes the map over time. That's right, like the, the state that the map starts at is gonna look different than the state that it ends at. Everything really changes, especially in different game modes when you have Dom right. and Hardpoint. And even with this idea of combat pacing around those structures, like we have tactical combat pacing where now destruction just matters so much more. When there's a lower player count and it's so much more intimate, and then you go into something like Blitz, which is just crazy amounts of players in there, and those maps completely change based on how that combat pacing is flowing throughout every playlist that you're going into and, and those modes even. We have a caliber system as well, which interacts with these destructive environments. And so you're able to now go caliber up or caliber down within each weapon. The heavier the caliber, the more it's going to change the, the look of the walls. It's not just visual either. Increasing the caliber does increase the damage the bullet does. So we're kind of moving away from this concept of protecting rate of fire and damage. We're letting the players control it. We have created class in the game and we're building on what was done in Modern Warfare 2019. You got your primary weapon, secondary weapon, three perks, lethals, and tacticals. It's about choices and about the player having choices. Within Create a Class, there's so much going on in there. We have the gunsmith system coming back. We have caliber system, ammo types, 10 attachments as well that you can put on the gun. The coolest thing about 10 attachments is that we were able to make it so that some of the attachments are much stronger than the other attachments. So you have a lot more options, kind of taking our 30-ish our guns and bringing it all the way up to over 100 because you can tailor them to whatever you want them to be. And then it's still familiar with the perks, the three perk slots, and you can actually modify those and get some modifications around some of the other core gameplay pieces. And with these weapons and with this caliber system, there's so much in there to be able to use. We have certain perks that are dedicated to it. Yeah, you might choose an LMG and then try to combine perks for close range to make it so much more like an SMG, but with that power and the ammo size that the LMGs are bringing. Or you might go the completely other way lean into our new mounted movement system so you can slide around the cover. You might equip it with piercing vision as one of your perks, your perk two, that allows you to actually highlight people through walls that you've suppressed. Suppression is a new mechanic that slows people down. And with that, like that is going to give us the most tactical experience you've ever had in Call of Duty. Yeah, we're trying a lot of risky things, allowing players to tune things like damage and rate of fire, but we're committed to figuring out the right values there, making a balanced game. We really want to push the envelope, and we really want to bring players a version of Call of Duty, a flavor of it that they haven't tried before. It is truly the most immersive Call of Duty experience I've ever played, and we're in this together. We're in it with the community, we're there getting feedback from them on all of these elements, and, it, and we want to make it the best for everyone. On this project, I feel like the collaboration between creative direction, design, and art, there was a lot more cohesion and so we've grown together in such a way where we can have these great conversations. It's about stepping out of our comfort zone a exactly. little bit. On the last 
project, we took on the brotherhood of the soldiers. It was a very traditional look at it. This game in Vanguard, it's a fresh look. We wanted something fresh, and we wanted to get into that anti-hero. This time around, we, we kind of dug deeper, and we tried to understand what the soldiers were going through. And it changes the way that they walk. It changes the way that they talk, even the way they would dress and how they would stand. It had to be somebody that was real and somebody that we felt that, like, I want to be that person. I want to play that person. I kind of see myself in that person. I think that that was big, too, right? Like, So who's your favorite character? When I saw Daniel Yatsu, I, I thought to myself, hey, you know what? I want to be that character because that character kind of feels like me, you know? And I think that's huge. I just love that our game, we're taking a character-centric approach. You actually have a roster. Yeah, you and get I, to learn more about them. Yeah, it makes me want to play every character. And they all have different looks as well that have their personalities in them. The character team has done a lot of great work to recreate, you know, all the materials and things like that. I mean, they dress the mannequin as the exact character, they scan it there, and then they virtualize the authentic gearing. The same thing happens within the maps as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we even have some maps that are actual spaces in the world. We typically start with a, a block mesh of a map and try to figure out how we can get photogrammetry assets to match that block mesh. We tried it the other way around on this one. And that would really capture the spatial relationships of the buildings and the road and, and the hedges. You know, it, it feels like a real place. It also helps with the tone because when something feels more realistic, you take it more seriously, yeah. you know? And when you want to be immersed, you don't want to be pulled out by something that feels artificial. And there's so many other things that we've done to this engine. Like, we've done a lot with foliage that's in our Pacific maps. Just speaking of simple things like foliage, the way that the light hits the leaves and then, like, bleeds and then shines through makes it feel more realistic. We've been using some new software techniques to generate simulations for really windy situations mm -hmm. where the palm trees are colliding with each other, and it really makes the map have this energy to it. All of those atmospherics, like the Battle of Berlin, Gavutu, like these maps have so much weather going on and it's been exceptional to see it in the game. Neo-Epic lenses is something we're looking at game-wide. We want to add that new, fresh, badass on top of the Epic setting. And that's something that you developed. Yeah, with the art team, we talked about what's the thing that's going to set us apart from the previous game that we made together. And so we talked a lot about the contemporary lens. And that's where the whole Neo aspect comes. Neo Noir, it's a new evolved version of film noir movies. So Epic is its own type of movie. We wanted to take cues from the great epics of the past and add a Neo rebirth to it. A lot of that has to do with composition of the landscape, the types of environments that we pick to play in, the palette, the color. A lot of it has to do with the tone. The art team has done an amazing job. Just the entire team as a whole has done an amazing job making this look great. With all the content that we had to do, we needed the rendering, we needed engineering, we needed the effects, the lighting, the whole team. We needed studio in Melbourne to get it looking super awesome in a way that we can deliver the, the, the best COD game we can do. We have a cast of characters. Those characters also come over into multiplayer. We took the personalities from our campaign and brought them to the wild, exaggerated, crazy world of MP. Sweet revenge! We have 12 operators at launch, six in the beta, all from different walks of life. What is bringing those characters together in campaign? Captain Butcher, who's a returning character from Call of Duty World War II, he's back, he's got a much larger role now. We needed a character when we went to the Special Forces, the 
connective tissue, who like, was the guy who went around and found all these people to give birth to this new type of warfare. And he puts them together and he sends them into these incredibly dangerous situations. Sometimes you need a job done. That's when you call the professionals. So these special operation task forces that we have, the SOTFs, what are these? That's the whole notion of, of multiplayer is that this is Butcher forming these teams. You know, they do feel like ragtag people pulled from all over the world to form these awesome squads of elite soldiers. So when you unlock one of these operators, you get that moment to learn more about their backstory. Melinda, do you have a favorite one of those? I do. My favorite is for Solange, who is Dutch Aruban, and she was plucked from her everyday life and put into the war, and she did strategy. And I think what's interesting is with our characters, we also not only touch on people who fought on the front lines, we touch on people that fought at home or were taken and not primed for war. They were just normal people that wanted to live normal lives and then the war happened and everything changed. You can't change your past, but you can choose how it molds you. Most of the time in, in multiplayer, you're, you're selecting the character, you're in the game, you're in the action running around. We have a couple that are just like absolutely crazy, don't we? I think Paulina's really sinister actually, and you get more of a look into her character. It almost makes you like afraid of her. It's about immersion, about putting players in there. And these stories are just fantastic. We wanted to champion a lot of the forgotten stories of the war, and a lot of them are female-led stories. There are a lot of women that had a part in the war, whether on the home fronts or on the battlefield. We created so much lore around them and their backstory and who they were as people, and also we wanted them to feel like distinct pieces on their own. As you're, you're randomly assigned an operator when you, when you start the game, you can now use that operator as much as you want. And then they have operator progression, which is a brand new thing where as you're leveling that operator, you're getting cosmetic rewards. They have charms that are based on their backstory, new cool animations that we use in the game for finishing moves and everything else that really immerse you in that experience. We don't have factions in multiplayer. It's team A versus team B. It is a very deliberate decision, but it's one that we found was for the best of the game. It, it allows players to be able to customize their character and how they want to play. You know, once we made that call, it was really important to then really dig deep into find all those different characters because it was a global war and people were fighting their own battles in their own countries. I do think though there's a lot of opportunities for people to learn about new perspectives and new angles on things that happened during that time period. So we have a lot of diversity in our characters, not just in their race, but in their appearance, their gender, and all of that is explored more in MP. They're all fictional characters grounded in World War II, but they are based on real people and real groups that did fight in the war. Another thing with campaign is the character you're playing as. We don't want them to talk too much mm -hmm. to sort of allow the player to live the fantasy. So in multiplayer, we get to actually make them talk, and you can hear them talk more. Didn't think I'd come back, kid. That brings me back to life. You had that coming. It's multiplayer, it's still a game, but there's so much history there, there's so much depth and richness, and you've been able to bring all of this together into this story that is quite amazing. Hey everyone, my name is Marc Alexandre Milo, the UI UX director at Dinox, and today I'm here representing Dinox, the lead PC developer for Call of Duty. And we are very excited to bring you Call of Duty Vanguard. Pinox has put together a dedicated and passionate team to push the quality of the PC version each and every year. We want the game to be tailored for our PC community by supporting both the latest hardware technology and also optimizing for the best performance. With Call of Duty Vanguard, you will get the greatest features and improvements that we have built over the years, such as the uncapped frame rate, the ultra wide and the multi monitor support, and also a lot of settings to fully customize your experience throughout the game. And about customization, we wanted our game to be even more accessible. We added an option to reduce motion sickness, improve text readability, and we even added adaptive ease of use settings to fit your gameplay style. We've also done a ton of work to improve input latency. By using a high-speed camera, 
combined with an Arduino board and an NVIDIA LDAT. It's a device that measures input to photon latency. We were able to identify opportunities to improve reaction time in terms of milliseconds. We have also reworked our autodetect features. As you may know, we optimize all the graphic settings based on your hardware. But this time, you get to choose if you prefer to have the awesome visual experience or aim for the highest frame rates. Lastly, while waiting for your friends to jump into your party or during a round transition, we added a setting that reduces the brightness of your other monitors to allow multitasking without missing any of the action. We have so much more to talk about in the upcoming months, and we can't wait for you to experience Call of Duty Vanguard on Battle.net. Now, I'll pass it to Raven to give you the latest intel on what's coming to Warzone this year. I'm Amos Hodge, Associate Creative Director at Raven Software. With the launch of Vanguard, we want to ensure that the feel and character of the game extends beyond the multiplayer experience and into Call of Duty Warzone. I am pleased to announce that there is a brand new Warzone map coming this year, shortly after the launch of Vanguard, and we are going to the Pacific, featuring an entirely new play space, complete with all new points of interest. Players will get to traverse the lush landscapes of the island and make their way through a variety of extremely cool locations while battling it out alongside friends and foes. Our goal was to create a fresh, new experience for Call of Duty players by breaking out of the war-torn world of Verdansk to create an atmosphere that is vibrant, alive, and it really opens the doors to how we can craft the narratives and events. As far as visuals and technology, Warzone Pacific will share the same tech and engine as Call of Duty Vanguard. This allows for seamless weapon integration and play balance. Fully optimized crossplay, cross progression, and cross gen support will be enabled so that you can play with your friends across different platforms and generations of consoles. But most importantly, we want to ensure that Warzone Pacific will be the best experience it can be. We will be launching with a multifaceted new anti cheat system that will be rolled out with the new experience goes live later this year. We're putting it through the final paces and testing and are excited to have it ready day one when the new Warzone experience releases. Our teams have worked hard on this and much more, and will continue to do so. We know how much it means to everyone. We will be continuing to offer a massive calendar of free post-launch content featuring new modes, playlists, limited time events, and seasonal events, as well as community celebrations and much more. We look forward to playing with all of you later this year when the Pacific officially comes online. We sincerely appreciate you watching, but there's so much more for our fans to experience from the beta through launch. The beta will be running over the next two weekends, and you can preload on PlayStation starting today. For your first look at live gameplay from Call of Duty Vanguard Core Multiplayer, tune in now to one of your favorite creators. From the entire development team around the world, thank you so much for joining us today. We can't wait to see you in the game.